wondering what the best potty training items are as well as which items people typically boast about but I think are worth skipping and saving your money on. Today I'm going to share all of the potty training items that we actually used. It has been over a year since we potty trained. This is my experience with these items through an entire year. So the ups and downs that come with toilet learning. If you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews as well as Montessori at home tips. And this video is part of a little mini series all about toilet learning, which is the Montessori approach to potty training. So definitely make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss future videos in this series, including my actual tips for toilet learning, our personal experience, as well as I'm gonna have a whole separate video on troubleshooting toddler constipation as well, which I know you guys will not want to miss. So let's get into my top toilet learning, potty training, whatever you wanna call it, picks. Throughout these items, I'm also gonna kind of give tips because every family is gonna have a different way that they want to approach this. So the first item is a great example of that and that is going to be a child accessible toilet. So this is a toilet that your child can go to and use independently without your help. For some families, they're going to want to use their regular toilet in the house and set that up with a step stool, maybe some safety rails, or even a special toilet seat. If you do go the step stool route, I do have an entire buying guide on my favorite step stools for toddlers, as well as my thoughts on those kind of like toilet step stools, you know what I'm talking about? It has the seat that goes over your regular thing and there's built-in step stool. I have like a whole post on my thoughts on that. Or you can just use a small potty, which is the option that we personally went with. We potty trained at two years old. The small potty ensured she would be able to access it on her own. And I also personally liked having the potty because we moved it with us around the house that first week, which I talk more about in my actual toilet learning tips and personal experience video. Around two and a half is when she started to use our regular toilets and we just used a step stool. We tried the special toilet seat cover thing for a minute and I just didn't love it. It didn't work for our family. She just learned how to hold herself over a regular size toilet and work with a step stool and that happened after two and a half years old. But every kid is going to be different and that was because she expressed interest in wanting to use the big toilet. Toilet, not because we prompted her to do so. My second must-have item is going to be a portable potty. Our absolute favorite is the foldable OXO. If you want to go eco-friendly, they do have reusable toilet liner silicone. You wash it out and reuse it. Otherwise, basically what this is, is it is a fold-up potty with bags. Unfold it wherever you are and the child can go. And this is our absolute lifesaver. Even after three years old, we still use it. It folds up small enough to fit perfectly into a diaper bag. I will say this, if you use this on a beach and your kid is going number two, you probably want to dig a hole underneath so that way the bag actually can like go in because it is such a low potty. If there's like a mound of sand in the bag sitting here, it will end up being too high, if that makes sense. But I 10 times recommend it. We have had to pull over on the side of roads and pop it open in the trunk of our car so she can go. We have had to use it behind trees at parks that don't have toilets. And I just really can't recommend it enough, especially in that first year when kids are just learning how to hold it, just learning to communicate. They may not necessarily understand timing. Like if you're in the car on a road, trip, it will take time to get to a potty. Um, this can end up being a huge lifesaver. The next must have is going to be a basket with essentials. So again, the Montessori approach is all about fostering that independence. So a little basket next to whatever toilet situation you decide to set up should have toilet paper that they can access on their own, some paper towels to clean up any accidents, maybe even fresh underwear, possibly some books, not necessary by any means, but you do want to have some sort of basket of essentials just like when you go to the bathroom you like to have certain things there and on that same note of underwear my personal suggestion is your first pack of underwear should just be a basic cheap pack. That is because you will probably go through that first set very quickly with accidents and you just don't want to have to care if you're going to throw some of those away. After your kid has toilet learning pretty much under control, go ahead, get the nice organic ones, get a little bit more expensive ones. But the first initial setup, in my personal opinion, should be a set of underwear you don't care if you have to throw away. And then the last must have as far as a Montessori approach to toilet learning is going to be a faucet extender. It really helps foster that independence. It 
in bathroom habits. Our whole little setup here is we have this step stool that she can turn between the toilet to the side of our vanity and that way she can actually reach the knob of the sink herself and then the faucet extender allows her to wash her hands herself. So ideally you're setting up a hand washing situation that they can do on their own whether that's using a step stool or a toddler learning tower which I also have a buying guide on or even if you set up a little like makeshift water basin that they can wash their hands at down below something like that some families may want to use like antibacterial soap in that basket of essentials just figure out some sort of sanitizing situation that they can get in the habit of go to the bathroom clean themselves up and then the next set of this is going to be slightly more optional must-haves but we personally use them and found them to be extremely helpful and number one is going to be piddle pads. We had these left over from our dog. You could also use towels. I do suggest having either towels or piddle pads to put underneath your child in their car seat and stroller in those early days. It just helps minimize cleaning up a mess, particularly on fabrics that maybe you can't throw in the wash or just a little bit more annoying to wash. On that same note too would be waterproof mattress covers. Particularly as you move to potty training for nap time or bedtime, these can be a huge lifesaver. I suggest just having at least two. And my pro tip for you is to make the bed, so waterproof sheet, and then do it again, waterproof cover sheet. That way, if there's a middle of the night accident, you just take off that first layer and the bed is already set up and made for the rest of the night and you're not having to shuffle and like put sheets and covers on a bed in the middle of the night. And yes, my, in my experience, there could even be two accidents in one night. So you don't wanna strip the bed and just throw a sheet over it because you still may have one more accident in stores. And then kind of on that same note, we also did use the Newton waterproof crib. I will say if you are gonna buy a crib and something like that, it saved us in our toilet training. I talk more about this in our actual experience video, but long story short, we were having a problem getting over a specific hump with night training. I actually moved my daughter's bed. She was in a queen bed at that point. We moved it out of the way, gave her the Newton waterproof crib mattress, and I was so impressed with this. And basically what it has is a top layer that is super quick dry. So if you get water or pee on it, it just kind of like spreads out. It dries really fast. So if you have to rinse it in the morning. It does not take a long time to dry. It'll be dry for nap time in my experience and it's super easy to clean. That's another good option if in their mattresses are like super breathable. So if you're nervous about like sits and stuff like that, their mattresses get like a lot of top ratings for various things. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. As far as potty training skips go, so these are things people will typically recommend but I don't think are worth it. Number one is going to be a potty training chart. So in the Montessori approach to toilet learning, there's no bribes, there's no rewards, Words, there's no potty training charts. And in my experience, these items can sometimes put an unnecessary amount of pressure on the child to perform. And it's also just more work for the parent. Now in my experience video, we'll talk about like my exceptions to those rules. But in generally speaking, I do not think it's worth it, particularly when first starting out with toilet learning. So that kind of, I guess, leads into my second skip, which is going to be skip the M&Ms, skip the food bribes, skip the presents and toys. Another big thing is going to be like the pull-ups and the potty training pants. So pull-ups, there's a lot of reviews on those. Some people swear by them but pretty much consensus is, is like it gives the child a false sense of wearing underpants and so if your child wasn't already in pull-ups for a while when starting the potty training journey I wouldn't introduce them. It can be confusing. Obviously there's a difference they can see between a pull-up and underwear but I just think it's a not necessary thing and that kind of leads me to potty training underpants which are basically underwear that have a thicker crotch groin area like a pull-up or a diaper where the child may not feel the wetness, the child still can feel the wetness, but the mess is absorbed more by that extra material. I don't know. I just think they're expensive and kind of a waste of money. Like, I want my kid to have an accident, especially as following the Montessori approach, because I want them to learn that the natural consequence of an accident is to clean it up. And if all of that's getting absorbed into an underpant or the majority of that is getting absorbed into an underpant, it kind of limits the reality of what that experience is going to be like. And I'm also at this point in my parenting journey where I just don't want to introduce things to my kids that I'm going to ultimately have to take away later on. Because potty training 
underpants are not going to be their forever underwear. I just don't think that it's worth the money. And then lastly are going to be any sort of flashy potties. These are your light up ones, your musical ones, all of those types of things that kind of gamify or make toilet learning a toy type of experience. If you have ever tried potty training a kid, you know that in general their small potty they will try to use as a toy at some point anyway. We don't need to add onto that by having a toy that's interactive or making noise and all of that type of stuff. They're not worth the extra money. They're kind of annoying. Make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss the next video in this series as well as go back and check out those previous videos all about toilet learning. And until next time, my name is Rachel. Have a good one.